Um, this award really is special to us because Don and I got involved as college students in the uh, conservative movement through the pro-life movement. And we did an awful lot when we were students up at Penn State, Don in particular. So uh, it, it means a lot to us. We were very, very proud of what J.D. Lane did as a journalist, and we understand very much uh, you know, how courageous a thing it was for him to do, as we were discussing beforehand. Most journalists are, may believe what J.D. believes, but they're not willing to come out and say it publicly. So, J.D., please come on, come on up, get your award, and please say a few words. I'm sorry, I didn't realize that John didn't gain the award. It's the um, Franklin Award for Courageous Journalism. You want J.D. to say a few words. Thank you, Terry and Don. Uh, Don Giordano, thank you, especially for all these years. It's going to be 12 years that you've had me on your show, uh, reading my column and promoting it. Thank you very much. And uh, to everyone here today, Reverend Woods, what a wonderful introduction and prayer. And of course, John Fun, who is uh, here today. Uh, an admirer of his work at the Wall Street Journal. He's selling books, so don't forget before you leave. Um, I wasn't supposed to be at the Gosnell trial because I work for the Bucks County Courier Times in Levittown. And there was no local tie before us. And that's the only rule my editors have for me. Uh, write columns to make sure they're local. So you get around that sometimes by going to the event, maybe you find a local person there and then you write about them. And I went there and there wasn't uh, any local story, but there was a national story. Because as I sat in the courtroom uh, Thursday, April 12, uh, 2013, and looked across at uh, four rows of, um, of empty seats set aside for the national media, and uh, there was only one guy sitting there, and that was me. And so I moved to the other side of the courtroom. I snapped a picture of those empty seats and uh, tweeted it out. And uh, the, uh, the picture went viral. And it may be the first time, I think, in American journalism history anyway, that the national media was embarrassed, uh, humiliated even, um, into covering a trial. So we can all be grateful that at least there is you know, some, some conscience going on in there. Uh, to uh, reporting without fear or favor, as the New York Times people like to say. You know, um, I guess we all have an idea of why we love uh, this country, um, its principles. And for me, uh, they were, uh, uh, they began when I was very young. If you uh, travel up I-95 North and get off at exit 20, which is a New Hope exit, and go south a few miles, you come to a place, um, and uh, it's Washington's Crossing, and there's a big park there. And for many years, when I was from the time I was a baby, uh, my parents, and grandparents, and aunts and uncles all gathered for our Fourth of July family gathering uh, at Washington Crossing. And I think it was uh, those years uh, with my aunt Ruth taking me by the hand and going across to the point where Washington crossed the Delaware and looking out across that gentle river at Coriolis Ferry and seeing it inspired my love to study uh, the founding fathers and my favorite founder, I know Don yours is John Adams, mine is Robert Morris. He is one of those unsung founders of the country, a signer of the Declaration of Independence, uh, a Pennsylvanian, a Bucks County. Uh, Morrisville is named for him because that's where he lived and that he was the financier of the revolution. And it is said by all the founders in their documents and diaries that uh, Robert Morris was not second to George Washington in importance in the founding of our country, but as important. He used his uh, uh, contacts, uh, trade contacts throughout the world, not only uh, as a spy network to keep track of British troop movements, uh, but he also uh, used the uh, those uh, trade routes and, and trade contacts to smuggle uh, artillery and weapons and goods a uh, year before the Declaration for Independence. And he, uh, he spent what in today's money would be about a quarter billion dollars of his own wealth to 
pay the troops, the Continental troops, when the Congress ran out of money. He bankrupted himself, and he ended up in the Walnut Street Prison, where Washington and other founders dined with him, actually visited him. Uh, his home, which is the next block over, it's not there anymore, but it was the, served as the first White House in the country. Uh, Robert Morris uh, was sprung from the Walnut Street Prison. Uh, after three months, the Congress uh, wrote a law that basically sprung him out, and he lived the rest of his life uh, quietly, uh, writing uh, to other founders. And I think that really, when you talk about courage, whether it's in journalism or whether it's in politics, that really is the great issue of our time. And I appreciate this award very much. I will display it on my desk. It may be the only award from a Tea Party group that sits on a reporter's desk, uh, mainstream media, probably the only one in, in America. And I will see, uh, as I explain what it is to my colleagues, whether they turn to dust. Thank you very much. <laughs> Happy